Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm gonna bring you some tips on clean color pens, using them specifically with letterpress paper today. I like to experiment with different mediums on different papers and different surfaces, that sort of thing, just to see what they do. And the clean color pens worked great on this letterpress paper. Lots of people like them on Bristol. I am a big fan of them on watercolor paper. And if you take a wet brush to these clean color pens, they will turn into watercolor. So they'll water out and move like watercolor would in some fashion. And they're also liftable, so you could put water on them and lift color out of them by dabbing with a paper towel, that sort of thing. Lots of different ways you can use these. And with this particular paper, they seem to blend very nicely with each other without water. And on watercolor paper, they do kind of the same thing and I do like that about them. The stamp I'm using today is from Stamping Bella and it's called Tiny Towny Blossom Loves Balloons. And when I stamped it onto my letterpress paper, I was a little confused. At first, I, I'm glad I did it on scratch paper first because when I had the balloons looking tilted and her feet straight, it looked like she was gonna fall over. If I had them both crooked, it looked like she was out of control flying through the air. But when the balloon strings were straight up, it looked like she was just being lifted carefully up in the air and swinging from the bottom of the balloons, which looked a little safer for her. And I did make a decision at the end of this that you'll see to make her not very high off the ground so that she didn't have to be very scared. With the dress, I've colored this one before and colored in between all of those little areas. And it was very painful because it's a lot of little detail and what I discovered was just coloring over it with red made it look like there was a black pattern on her dress and it looked just great. Now I had originally planned on going in and doing some white pen on the dress, but by the time I was done I liked it so much as is that I just I, I left it without any extra color in it. I will do some shading on it in a minute. So her little, uh, her little leggings, I'm using a black and a gray to blend those. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of gray in the lace sticking out of her little skirt. So um, I'm going to add a few little details here. Now this is where I'm going to add the shading. So I'll put a dark red underneath of the shadowed areas and places where the light will not be shining on as directly. And then blend it out with the lighter color again. Just go over the top of it and the colors blend very nicely. All the numbers in the upper left, if you're unfamiliar with Zig Clean Color Markers, they're, they have names, but they also have numbers. And the numbers on my pens, I have little labels that I made for them so that I could actually see the numbers because they're very tiny and the names are very tiny. So I've made my own labels. I'll link you in the description down below to a place where you can go and download that for free if you would like, if you want to make bigger labels for your own markers. So I started making the balloons, and this first balloon I did the way that I had intended to, which was to leave a highlight. The second balloon is behind the first balloon, and if the light is coming from that upper right, you're not really going to see the spot where the light would hit that balloon. So I'm just going to do two blues on it, so have the medium color, and then add the dark shading, and then blend it out with the lighter, uh, that medium blue color. Now when I got over here, I lost my mind which has been known to happen before when I'm coloring. All of you who seem to feel the need to point out if I forgot to color one button on something on a YouTube video will, will know that I lose my mind from time to time. And I didn't leave a white highlight on that one. But what I realized was I liked it with a softer highlight because I want the focus on the little girl. I don't want it as much on the balloons. I want people to look at her and when there was too much white up there, it just, it popped too much. So then on the other balloons, I did the same thing. I left the lighter color for the highlight and just do the shading in around it so that I could have a lighter color highlight. And I thought that worked pretty well. So for having made an oops and uh, not done what I intended to, it actually worked out pretty good. And even though that balloon back there is not part of the balloon above, because the angle of it isn't right, I decided to have a couple of repeating colors in the balloons just so I didn't have too much crazy color going on here. And get my final balloon figured out. 
And then on the ground underneath of her, I just added a little swoosh of gray. And that was all I had to do to make her look like she was above the ground, but not by too much. For my finished card, I just added the panel onto a card base and left it really simple with just the sentiment. The sentiment is, by the way, from a Hero Art set, which has become rapidly my favorite stamp set for sentiments. And I'll link you to that in the description down below so you can take a look at it. It has something for every occasion that is a general occasion. And I love, love, love it. They used to have an older one and I've got this one now and I'm just happy, happy camper. So here's a couple more clean color videos. If you would like to see some more with these markers, you can always hit the subscribe button to get more from me. I put out about three videos a week. You can see more on my blog as well. And I would love to meet up with you out there on social media. I'm Sandy Allnock just about everywhere. Mostly on Instagram is where I hang out. So I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.